you can work with in LibreCAD and of course with the uh, more expensive commercial CAD programs out there but uh, this is very handy when you're uh, designing something and you're going to design it around somebody's product and a lot of companies have uh, these DXF files and they're available for your download there is a lot of good out of this uh, there are some problems also. We'll talk about that. Okay, <clears throat> what I'm looking at right now is a company called Bud Industries, and they make uh, metal enclosures. They make plastic enclosures too uh, for electronic components primarily. There you make the smaller stuff. Uh, it looks like they've got some NEMA boxes, which might also work for uh, heavier duty electrical work but uh, what I'm most familiar with is the electronic boxes so we're going to go to uh, for an example we're going to go to their small metal enclosures which is something that you would use for an electronic box okay and the first one I'm going to pull up is this CompuCab series and you'll find out there's a reason why I'm pulling this one up first you see it describes it and it even has a drawing here to do it but you know you really if you were designing something you might like to be able to draw this out before you actually uh, actually design something around it and uh, you have the ability here to uh, look at these from uh, get these in PDF format but you can also get it in DXF, and DXF is what we're going to talk about today. All you have to do is just click on it, and it asks you if you want to open it or if you want to save it. And it turns out I've already saved this thing. We're going to open it right now, and we're going to open it right into LibreCAD. And there it is, everything we need to know. Okay, uh, there is some problems that uh, would drive us crazy. But I, as you can see, I just downloaded it. Okay, first of all, everything is in inch format, inch sizes. Uh, if you go back to the website, and we'll go back to that, you'll see that everything is described in inches here. And uh, in, in pounds, it's all in a... In a the imperial measurements, I think, are what they're called. The uh, ones that we use here in America. Well, as I go into the drawing, let's go back to the LibreCAD. Where is it? It's down here. Okay. First question I got is, uh, what's the current drawing preferences in this thing? And you see that uh, it has grid turned on, but its main drawing units in millimeters. I go, huh? <laughs> and uh, there's really some interesting stuff of what they've done here. Also, if you look, the paper is custom. And it's 12 inches by 9, I think is what it's saying, or 12 by 9, but that would be in metric. Uh, and that's interesting. <laughs> Anyhow, for the heck of it, let's just see what would happen if we try to print it. We'll go up here and do a print preview. And one to one sure as heck ain't going to get it. Uh, it's not quite that small. One to 125. One to 25. Um, I'm surprised it didn't want to scale it for us. Uh, see, I think I had one to five came close. And obviously it's going a little bit past the margins. Uh, so we'd have to work with it. 
and the paper is still their custom paper. If I go to, let's, oops, I don't want to save it. I go to um, edit current drawing preferences. Let's make the paper a more normal for us in America of a letter. Okay, and now I do a uh, print preview. It scaled it for me and it made it so it would fit, so I could print this now. Uh, it would be at a weird scale. I couldn't take measurements off of it, but I could have the drawing. Okay, uh, anyhow, that's interesting that they use metric, even though they're using inches is what they're using for their actual units of the thing. They did that so that way they could draw it to scale and they could use uh, decimal points uh, so they create a scale drawing automatically by doing that um, so you couldn't just take this drawing and then start trying to draw your knobs and your meters and all the other things that you might be wanting to put into this cabinet by directly drawing it you'd have to uh, probably take parts and pieces out of this and then scale them up to create what you wanted and that's what we normally did when we use boxes in professional actual engineering uh, we'd import these DXF uh, different kind different kind of box but uh, we would import these and then actually work on them and draw the parts and pieces which we also got DXF files for those almost everything that you buy you can find a DXF file for it almost everything that you buy that's a component that you're going to use for something. Okay, um, now as we go back to the website, you see the other option is I just clicked on that and then allowed it to get go directly to the uh, to LibreCAD. I could have clicked on it and chose download and that's what I've done. Uh, and I've done that for a whole bunch of their cabinets. Let's see if we can go back to the previous uh, for a lot of these right in here. So I have them on file right now. And uh, as I did that, I saved them in a directory. We're just going to uh, close this one. Save them in a directory that I call Bud Boxes. So we'll look at that particular one that we just did. And, uh, okay, there's still a few things as we start working with this that we're going to have a few hassles. First of all, you notice that the text is very, very small on those dimensions. So we'll zoom in on a couple of them. And it's also comes in kind of funny, and you're going to have that problem anytime that you import DXF. Uh, the text seems to be the biggest hassle. Also, this percent percent U that's stuck in this right in here, it says front view. Uh, what that is, is a, a command that's for AutoCAD, and that would underline that, that thing. Uh, that's not available to us. But let's go in and we'll do a text modify. Okay, we can change it. Its height is 0.5. Uh, looks like a pretty good height to me. And then if I really wanted to underline it, I would just have to draw a line underneath it. I don't see underline as a function that's available in LibreCAD. But I probably wouldn't care. <laughs> okay, and now let's look at uh, this right in here. <clears throat> if we go into that, First of all, let's just double check and see if it's if it's going to work for us. And I have already done this. And I am going to do this top number here, which is 9.93. And we're going to see if it's a one-to-one -one scale. So I will go from endpoint to endpoint. 
and then I will move it up a little bit so I can read it and it's 9.93 so yeah it's scaled one to one but it's in millimeters and the real measurements in inches um, so uh, hey that's really handy so let's uh, now delete what I just did and now we'll work with the actual dimensions and I'll show you something kind of interesting here. Uh, let's go to um, we're going to do edit edit entity geometry we click on that dimension and notice what happens it now moves it up above the line so I can clean all this up if I want to it's on layered dim, which is kind of cool. So let's just say that I want to make my dimensions look a little different. They've set everything to uh, black and white. We can modify it to yellow uh, since I have the black screen. And now I can go in, turn off everything except the dimensions. Now I go into uh, change properties and I'm going to select everything that's on dimension and I'm going to make their layer, well their layer already was dim but I'm going to make it by layer and now they're all yellow. So now if I turn on everything else, I can tell what's a dimension just by looking at the top. Except, yeah, I can, I can tell this one is every dimension. So you can uh, modify it, make it fit the way you want it to fit. Uh, you can uh, take these pieces and uh, import them into other drawings if you were wanting to... Uh, show your buttons and by the way this is an isometric type drawing up up here which is a way of making a uh, 3d drawing on a 2d paper and uh, you can use these for a lot of different things so it's very very helpful and even though you have to work a little bit with these dimensions uh, we'll go back and do that again edit geometry click just accept it. Don't do any changes. Click. Accept it. Don't do any changes. And it moves everything off the line for me. Uh, and that's just because I think it was their style of doing things. Uh, and you could also go back. Go to Edit. Current Drawing Preferences. Dimensions. Let's say I want to make that text height a little bit bigger so I can make it, say, 0.25. Make it twice as big. And now I have bigger text there so I can read it from a distance. So the drawings can be modified. You can do a lot, a lot of stuff to them as you start working through these. So it's a really good resource. And that's the good news. And then the bad news about, hey, you have to work with it a little bit. There's a little bit more bad news, and I'll show you that. And I picked the, uh, the best one to show you at first. We'll go ahead and save my modified one. Since I didn't really modify much in it. And we'll go to this mini boxes for an example. Okay, when this one comes in, as you look at the dimensions of it, We'll look at those, uh, we'll zoom into them. Uh, you notice the dimensions are only late, uh, letters. So what they've done is they've created one drawing to show you how the, how the box works. But then you have to go to this table down here to find the exact dimensions for the box you want. Okay, your answer for doing that would be you copy the, uh, the parts that you want over to another drawing. And then you use the uh, 
stretch function and stretch it out to make it the way you want it to make it the size of the actual box that you're going to use and that, that way you'll actually have a scale drawing and you didn't have to do a whole lot of work you didn't have to draw the whole drawing uh, you only have to modify one of these so that's the fix for it and uh, that will get the job done for you uh, and after you've scaled it to your particular size, you'd probably want to save it as uh, my box or whatever you want to call it. And then you could use the uh, drawing over and over and over uh, for different projects. So, this is a way of uh, getting, getting DXF files uh, for your use. And uh, it helps the vendors and it helps the, uh, the people that sell these. And it helps you. And it's a, it's a nice service that they have out there now for uh, lots of things. Uh, you can find many, many, many DXF files out there for whatever you're interested in. Go to your, do a web search for it. Then what you do is uh, go to, go to the vendors and uh, see if it's one that you're going to be buying. And then, and we call them vendors, uh, the people that sell the stuff. Uh, go to the, their websites, and then if they have DXF, just download the DXF, and you're ready to go. Uh, and uh, it's it's a pretty good way, pretty good way to get the job done. Get it done a whole lot easier than drawing everything. Uh, as you can tell, they use many different uh, blocks. We haven't really talked much about blocks because blocks a lot of times are hassles. And as I turn these off, I don't see anything turning off there. I'll see what HB, okay, HB did the, uh, the whole box. I don't know what HB stood for, but it turned off the, the border on that drawing. Uh, so there's, they've got these blocks in here, but I don't know what they do. Uh, they also have all these different layers, so yeah, you can turn things off and on there. And there's one other one I need to show you a little something about. See, they have some hidden lines. You will have to diddle with the scaling on those hidden lines sometimes. Um, let's see, hidden. Let's just go to it. Well, before we do that, let's zoom in on it a little bit. So there was a hidden line right here, I think. Let's see if we turn this off. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't look very hidden to me, so we'll go to it and modify the layer. And uh, it says it's a dash. Let's go to a dash small. And that didn't help. Uh, let's go to uh, and one that will help. Current drawing preferences. And I don't know if we want to do this on the long run, but if we change it to inches, now the uh, dash is looking better. And I don't know why that happened that way. Anyhow, um, you see you can play with the drawing and get it the way you want. I should have made this a, uh, I will not be saving this one, but I should have made it, uh, my naming convention is that I call it hacked when I've worked with it a little bit uh, until I get it what I want. That way I still have the Futura boxes, still have those in the original format, but then I've got one that I've messed with. And uh, let me show you one other thing. Uh, let's see, let's go back to Zoom All. Okay, there is another little problem here with this. If you go to this text, you see that they're all outside the boxes. Uh, what you can do, you go to text, and then all you do is click on this one that puts it in the middle center, and it centers it up. Uh, the problem is you have to do it for each and every one of those. I know no quick way of being able to do it. Uh, but you can modify your text that way so you get it right in the middle of the boxes. Uh, it still beats the heck out of typing all that stuff out. 
but uh, it is a little bit of a hassle there. All right, I think I've showed you just about everything I know about this. Let's see, let's just for the heck of it change text to uh, a different color. Let's change it to green. I like green text. And it all changed. So everything was by layer. Sometimes some things are not by layer. Dim. Let's change that to yellow. Uh, why did I say yellow? I don't know. <laughs> and all of that was by layer. So you see the good, the bad, and the ugly on dealing with these things. There's a whole lot you can do. There's a lot more good than there is bad and ugly. And it does work with LibreCAD. Appreciate you listening. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this. Um, yeah, and I think I appreciate you listening. Hopefully you got something out of this. Thank